Hey guys, here we are in the second round of the Oleksandr Gochik and uh, Unieski Gonzalez fight. Um, the first fight, the first round was pretty good. Um, I think that without the little bit of um, control that he was using to to bring his guard up and test his guard uh, and then land those body shots, that the first round was pretty even. Um, Gonzalez was jabbing with him and, you know, catching him sometimes, uh, but uh, Gocek still got the best the best of the round. Um, but aside from that, with their, like, you know, the C-level plan uh, where he's not setting stuff up, um, the round was pretty even. Uh, so let's get on into the second round and see what we can see. There we go. Uh, and first, real quick, I want to address something too. Uh, this is something I didn't notice even until the second round. You know, you really got to pay attention to a fighter, and it's tough to pay attention to both fighters and what they're seeing because both of them are doing such drastic different things. But look at how Alexander gets to his high guard right here. Uh, he gets to his high guard and then starts probing, uh, and that's one of his tells that he's going to be using a probing jab. Um, I didn't, I didn't see it in the first round, um, but he he goes to this and then he starts probing. And then, you know, the little last jab, he throws kind of hard. But probing again, probing again. And now he stood in front of... Um, he stood in front of Unieski a little bit too long. And he just kind of throws a punch. Uh, so we'll look to see how he deals with that too. I'll show you guys um, what he goes on to do. But uh, back to the current action. Again, then he jumps right back to the jab and gets his guard up makes Unieski kind of think that he's going to be doing those fainting jabs again. Uh, when he, as soon as he brings his guard up like this, uh, he throws some punches. And brilliant how at the end of this combination with the right hand, he steps out to his right, uh, away from the punches that Gonzalez is going to be able to throw. Right there. And this jab, he kind of catches this jab, but you see it still hits him in the face. Um, so a good jab. Uh, timing with with Gonzalez uh, seeing him go to the high guard and then try to catch him inside of it um, right here does kind of the same thing shows the high guard but then he kind of sticks these jabs and if you notice his position in the ring remember he doesn't want to get caught along the ropes like he was last time so he commits to these jabs and pushes Unieski back uh, smart boxing there and then the same thing now every time that he goes to the high guard. Uh, Unieski's kind of trying to jab with him. Again, right there. That's two times in a row where he kind of tries to jab with him. But he's uh, he's getting his... He's catching the jab with his right hand. Uh, and he's able to circle out. And look at look at how, uh, how close he gets for it being cut off. And then immediately just runs over here and clears the next side of the ring. So there's no chance that he's going to be able to get caught in the next corner. Really smart boxing from him. Shows him the jab again. But interestingly, he doesn't... Oh, he does go to the high guard right there. Uh, and Unieski doesn't actually even counter him. But he gets him to bring his guard up and throw some punches. But notice how he he doesn't have his guard up after. He's not pivoting to an angle right here. And he kind of eats that. And then this jab. I don't, I don't know if it's a jab to the body or if he catches it. Let's kind of take a look. Yeah, catches him with that one. And I think he barely catches that one. So good work on him. Uh, and he also puts his uh, his jab hand out there to kind of ch to kind of try and control him. Blah. Um, and then circles out, gets away from the right side of the ring, and then circles out to the left side. And then that's interesting now. He noticed now that with his jabs... Um, Unieski's trying to jab with him, right? So he here he is, and he baits the jab. But Unieski, uh, he gets his gloves up, but he, look at how he ducks down away from it. And he's not really in position to punch. And Alexander kind of just pivots out, or like shoots out to the right a little bit off the right hand. Uh, good work from him. But he's, he's watching him, you know, and he's kind of figuring out how he's reacting to all his punches, and that's how he's going to set up his offense later. Catches, I think they trade jabs right there. Unieski kind of trying to lead. And again, he puts his head down to get away from the, the probing, right? Shows him the high guard. High guard again, and then probes. 
I'm not sure if he lands here. I don't know if that lands exactly. Um, but then he catches him with that left hook. Uh, and Unieski's punches are blocked. Or missed, rather. And right here, this is interesting. Because he stays close. But they, they time each other's jabs. You know, Unieski sees that even though he doesn't go to the high guard right here, he times his jab really well. And you... I think he does land it. Let me get a better look at it. But the point is, is he he recognizes that when he puts his when he puts his glove there, um, without doing high guard first, that he's going to commit to a jab, and he kind of catches him with a jab there. Again, goes to the high guard, then uh, jabs, and Unieski says, "Ah, I don't want to play this game." Kind of ducks to get away from it, thinking more are going to come. And right there, when he stops, he goes to jab and he puts his uh, his jab or his right hand next to his chin. And Unieski knows he's going to commit to a jab right there, and simply slips it. Uh, he almost lands that shot. You know, it kind of sounds like it lands with the audio on, but then you can't really tell how clean it is. Um, but uh, Unieski has kind of seen the different styles of jabbing that that Alexander is trying to use going from high guard to the catch um, jab and catch um, and he's kind of figuring a couple of things his little tricks out and right here this is really smart too as you see he skates by this little area of the ring so his back doesn't get on the ropes and uh, as he follows him to the next area he goes to try to cut him off uh, Alexander changes direction and then now he's even closer to Unieski uh, so he throws a jab and then just ties him up. And this is really sneaky. I really like this little move from him. Uh, when he ties him up, normally when they, get, when they get broken up, they wind up in basically the same position that they were just in. You know, they'll basically wind up about right here. So he throws that jab, gets him to dodge it, right? And as the referee's coming over, instead of spinning to his right like they normally would, uh, he spins to his left. So when the referee breaks them, he's on the he's on the inside of the ring. Really clever, really tricky right there. That's uh that's definitely some crafty stuff from him. Again, high guard, and then he feints the jabs. Unieski kind of knows what he's doing and starts trying to jab with them, and uh, he kind of winds up falling in on him. And um, obviously, Alexander doesn't want this guy just to like, you know, lead with his jab and start throwing punches. So he kind of ties him up. Boom, and this is really smart. So he goes to the high guard. Hold on, let's get right here. So he goes to the high guard, and Unieski knows. He's like, oh, you know, he's going to do the probing. He's going to do the probing, so I want to wait the probing out. So he slips, rolls, and now this is the part where usually when Unieski is down here, he doesn't throw any punches when he's moving his head like this and doing this head movement. Um, but his feet are also not necessarily in punching position either. He's not in as an athletic stance. And he waits for him to throw a punch, and it looks like he lands it, but Unieski was actually baiting him to throw that punch because he knew that it was coming after the probing. And uh, luckily for Alexander, he's able to get his glove up and catch it. But really sneaky from Unieski setting the trap, uh, even though it doesn't work out from him. Oh, but then he gets him right here. So no high guard, no high guard just like I talked about. He goes to jab and counter, or jab and catch, and Unieski sees it coming, slips it, and then cracks him with that hand. Just a huge punch. And then he kind of tries to control his neck, um, Alexander does, and because he knows he caught him with that shot, he just starts unloading punches to the body. And uh, this is what you don't really want to see from a fighter. Um, after he gets hit, he kind of stays there frozen for a second. Um, you, you'd prefer that he either hold, even though nobody likes to see holding, um, or he uses the head control that he has to push him off um, and create space. You, you never want to stay there for those, you know, that little combination of punches. One, two, three, boom. But anyway, goes back to his jab and uh, tries to counter jab like he had been doing before earlier, uh, and Unieski times him again. Unieski really coming on right now, you know, after figuring out that little trick to his jab. Uh, so let's see what uh, 
how he changes it up. Circling, again, really smart defense right here when he throws the jab, catches the right hand. And smart from um, Unieski too, after he throws it, he gives a little roll just in case another punch was coming. Oh, brilliant. Shows him the, uh, the high guard, gives him a couple jabs, and he waits for the counter because he knows that now he's, um, he's trying to punch with him, and he waits for the counter and catches him with an uppercut. Just brilliant. And, you know, he shouldn't be kind of holding him by the head, you know, but he's not really landing, soup, like, too many um, clean punches without it. So, you know, whatever. And this is brilliant. Gets to the high guard, feints a jab, and waits for him to to counter with his own jab, and then throws the one-two. Unieski sees it coming. He rolls the jab, or he rolls the right hand. But uh, it's really good stuff from Alexander. And at this point in the round, it kind of made me wonder if all of that high guard to probing was to try and get Unieski to uh, counter those probing jabs anyway. Kind of like I talked about in the first video. But it kind of seemed like, like at this point that that's what he was trying to do the whole time. Not just get him to put his high guard up, um, but to get him to counter the punches so he can land a right hand a right hand counter but if that is what he was doing it's brilliant that he recognizes that through the high guard he can still take advantage and set up offense really really smart fighter again doesn't uh, do the high guard and Unieski knows that he's gonna commit to this punch but Alexander he's because his whole plan seems to be to get him to punch with him um, that he has the the right hand block up to so he's kind of just reading him really well right now. A little more of the same. Feints the jab. And I think he was expecting Unieski to jab with him. And he kind of shoots, not shoots, but um, takes a step to the right and throws a right hand. Uh, he didn't get the jab that he was hoping for, but, you know, safe than sorry. Boom. Catches him with some big shots. Gets him to do the jab. And when he leans in with the jab to avoid the... See how he moves his head to the right to avoid a right hand? And um, he catches him with a punch. So using the, the good head movement that Unieski uh, has exhibited after punching against him and catching him with the shot. Oh, and catches him with a great right hand too. Just kind of off timing. You know, Unieski might have been actually expecting a jab. Uh, but he just gets wrecked right there. You know, not the hugest shot, but... Oh, man. Just real quick, so he jabs again, right? And he's shown that when he doesn't go into the high guard, that Unieski is going to counter jab him. So he jabs him right here, takes a step back, waits for him, but he doesn't do anything. He just moves, just gives him a little head movement. And he knows that he doesn't punch when he has the head movement. See, remember how... um. Earlier I was saying usually when he uses this head movement and he dips down, he's not in punching position, right? Because his feet are a little closer together, his legs aren't bent, but the last time they were, he recognizes that and he unloads a combination when Unieski gets out of position and then shoots out to his right. Just brilliant boxing, great awareness from this guy. Uh, he's really showing some great stuff. Oh, and again, jab, gets him to jab with him again. And then that, that right hand doesn't look like it lands, but you can see it, boom, and, sh and it makes him just rock. So it looks like the whole time, the whole purpose of Alexander's jab is to kind of bait jabs from Unieski. Again, jab, rocks back, rocks back again, and then catches him with the right hand. Instead of rocking back and throwing a one-two, he rocks back and only throws the two because Unieski was seeing that coming. So again, just really good stuff from Alexander. Again, the same exact thing. Jabs, rocks back, and then th comes in with a combination. Again, puts himself out of position. He throws the right hand. Doesn't land anything, you know, but that's not really the point. And this... This is just like 
perfect timing right here. You see him rock back and throw the one-two just in time to get away from the jab. And then like kind of like that whole like um, Mayweather thing where when somebody jabs, he'll lean to the inside, shoot a jab of his own, and then throw the right hand. He just does that perfectly and catches him with another right hand. He's just picking Gonzalez's jab apart now, uh, just doing a lot of great stuff. Again, right there, baiting the, trying to bait the jab so he can rock back and catch him. But remember how he did this in the beginning of the round? And he just stood in front of Unieski, and Unieski threw the, uh, the jab to the body instead? Well, now he realizes, uh, you know, I better change slots, you know, make him reset. And that's what he does. But uh, I guess like a final flurry from Unieski uh, at the end of the round. But uh, that's not what you want to see from a fighter right here, standing in front of this combination. Even though none of it lands, you know, if you're not, if you don't have your hands on your opponent, if you're not, you know, give him a stiff arm jab or like a, a clean jab or, you know, you're not going to body up with them and hold them after they throw the first punch, um, you run the risk of getting caught with a big shot. You know, that guy's, that's a big guy and you don't want to just take punches from him. Uh, eventually he does tie him up and the round ends. But um, a lot of great adjustments. You know, Unieski is showing, even though, like, it doesn't seem physically like he's as gifted or, like, as fast, you know, because these guys are these are big guys. Um, he's showing that he's a smart fighter, you know. He, he didn't waste all his, you know, nearly 400 fights in the amateurs uh, and not learning stuff. So he's a good fighter. But uh, Alexander is showing that he's kind of got a game plan, and part of his craft is... You know, fighting off of his opponent's jab that he kind of baits out. Uh, and he's just doing a lot of great things. You know, you're a, a little tightening up, you know. And um, he, I definitely think that with the skills of baiting shots and uh, setting his own shots up and seeing the shots coming, um, a little tightening up to his, to his defense. Uh, and he could definitely make it to the, uh, the A-level fighter slot, you know, where, you know, fighters like... Golovkin and Vasily Lomachenko and probably Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. Um, he can make it into that like that area. And uh, it looks like he'll be doing it off of his skills. He's not particularly fast. He's not particularly strong. But his skill set is just so... such a tr He has such a tremendous skill set um, that he I think that he could make it there eventually. I think he kind of wants to take it a little easy, a little slower not go on to like a like a title fight in his next fight even though he's beating the you know he's beating this guy pretty handily I think that he definitely should take a couple more fights before he gets there before he fights someone like uh, Sergey Kovalev um, where the punches that he throws are not as forgiving um, anyway uh, like comment and subscribe let me know what you guys think uh, let me know if there's anything in the videos that I miss you know point stuff out um, I always appreciate that, looking back at it and seeing what my what my viewers see. Because uh, I, I can't see everything. Um, I didn't even notice the high guard versus uh, just the regular jab until the second round. Um, but anyway, like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what you think. And let me know what fights you want me to break down. Um, I kind of put Golovkin, Lemieux on the back burner at the moment because I can't find a place where I can download the fight to give it a breakdown. Uh, even though there's some great things in that fight. Um, but anyway, thanks guys.